Hey everyone, my name's Chris, and today we're going to be looking at, well this game, what is this game we're looking at? This is the Anteater from 1982. It's a very old game, uh, and I want to recreate this in Raylib. Pretty much pure code, except for Raylib is our, basically our only support, and uh, the reason I want to do this is this is a little bit of a, a programming practice, and it has some simple uh, concepts that we have to do as well. Uh, I think it'll be really good for some learning points and some theory because we have some basically a collision detection, we have a simple point system, we've got some simple graphics and uh, a bit of randomization with the way the levels were created. I think this is, will make for an interesting game to recreate. It's not too big, it's not too small and uh, be quite fun. So, let's go. So I've just written a little like documentation to go over uh, how you deal with this game, and so so it's the uh, so our language libraries are just going to be GoLang and Raylib. I'm choosing GoLang because it's what I'm familiar with. Uh, that's just what I'm going to do in this case. Uh, no game engine because uh, I want to do it as much as I can. So the only graphics library I'm going to be using is Raylib, but I'll also be using other libraries such as like Math Library. I'm not going to write lots of the any yeah, mathematics I'll need to do that when I can just import that. So the goal is, is a faithful recreation so I don't want to, no new new quirks, no no big changes, I want it to be pretty much just trying to make it as one to one as possible. Uh, so this is like including the procedural levels so in the game the, the, the holes and the layout would slightly change. Uh, obviously the scoring system will be present with the worms, the ants, uh, and the spiders. The life system, so there's a certain amount of lives before the game ends. So uh, if you, your character dies or the anti that gets hurt, they live life, so that, that's going to remain in the game. I also have some stretch goals, just in case I want to take it a little bit further. So one is controller support and multi-platform support, specifically Android, because I believe uh, Rayleigh runs on Android, but also I guess we talk about uh, just Windows, OS X, maybe, and so on and so forth. So, let's just see uh, that. So, uh, quite a small document, uh, quite a small game. Be a good start. And uh, some, we have a you know, nice little goal to go to just to recreate a game. So, I think first things first is that we just functionally get it work before we even put graphics in. So, let's get to it. Now, the first thing I did was add. Uh, just a simple level generator, and I, I rendered it with black and uh, sorry, red and blue squares, and I made a little grid format. And uh, this level generator looks all right, but it's quite flawed, uh, and I'm going to update it. But it'll do for now. Uh, it can, essentially the method I'm doing, as and the code you can see right now in the generate level, is we first hard code level, which is where the tongue will be. So in the center will be where the hole which is set by a zero, and then at the bottom is one, so one represents the wall, a zero represents the background. I make a random seed, uh, and I say I want an array of random holes. Gets the height, It'll, uh, first insert the array of holes, and then we generate an array from essentially four to one on the width ways, and we keep going through and we get the length of it and we essentially try and check make sure that two holes aren't connected because in the example and when you generate it sometimes you get two holes right next to each other now this doesn't appear in the original game and so what it will attempt to do is generate it'll go back and regenerate it now this doesn't really work because it can actually result there is another method to try and guarantee it but this because of the limited range this can result in a endless loop that's trying to create a number, but there's no numbers it can create because all the possibilities are not available. So I think my better approach is to instead uh, create an array with an arrange uh, an array with the numbers that it can generate a hole in, and it simply just picks that one and then removes it to removes the rest on this, so it can pick another one at random. And I think that will be uh, far more effective. And if it removes all the possible combinations, then they can just do a reset of a combination, uh, something like that. Or 
I never met was we just hard code it, hard code the possible combinations and simply just use it at random. But uh, at random, which is uh, another way. Now that we got the level generator, I thought, you know what, I'll take a break from the coding a bit and I'll add in a bit of art. Now I just got some free open game art, but I also got, I also made an anti with a bit of assistance, but as you can see, you know, this is, it's alright, the, the, it's kind of, you know, not very great contrast and such, and what's got the red square to represent where the tongue will be, but yeah, you know, it's okay, you can also see more of the flaws of the level generator too few holes here, not great, so yeah. But you know, we've got a bit of got a bit of style going now. Now, we live in an age of AI, so I thought I'd get a bit of assistance. I thought I'd use Dali E to give me a bit of inspiration. What I did was ask for a pixel art of an anti dungeon as you can see we actually got some good results. I think this one is my favourite. And so I just went in, went open up Critter and I made a modification to it. As you can see, uh, it's pretty good. I flipped it around, I extended the tail, changed some of the colorings, but it still make for at least a good temporary sort of one. I also have one for ants, That's some pretty good ones as well. I did redesign it. They 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 look kind of cool, and uh, they make make for some placeholder art for now, and just speeds up a little bit of the process. Uh, I'll probably go through and probably polish a design for both of these. I tried Worm as well, but uh, Worm kind of came out a bit funky, so probably won't be using these ones. Now, looking back at the video, I think I think next I want to add is the tongue. Uh, as you can see, it kind of goes by a grid by grid basis. Uh, so we need to check every time it moves whether it is a wall. Or uh, background. If it's background, then it can just progress through. If it's the wall, it can't go through. So it will go move by move. And you also notice that you can press R to quickly go back as well, which is much faster than going forward. Uh, we should hopefully see an example here once he picks it up. Yep, look, like that. So that should be pretty easy to add a few loops. I think we'll have it cracked down. So check this out when I run my thing. Oh, oh look at this. I can move the tongue. Oh, it can go down. And if I press R and I hold it down, it's back. And by let's say I do a loop. Uh, I keep pressing. I'm, press, I'm pressing A, and I can't progress back and go back. So nice. How did I do that though? So this was uh, pretty easy. Let me go to the player. What should so first, we look at the variables. We have the tongue, which is just a rectangle for now. Uh, the position X and the position Y. The, so it starts on layer zero, and it starts in the center seven. Uh, I probably shouldn't hard code these. I don't, maybe I should use base on the the array in a level, but for now we'll just do it like this. Uh, we have the length of the tongue, which is in the pin thirty two array. But since la the time since last tongue, so this is when it comes to retracting, and then it tongue retract rate. This may not be the best variable name, so I might read them as myself. But every 0 0.001 it can retract and this is just so if if we didn't have, have this timer and someone press R and if let's say we have and they also have a very high frame rate, it will absolutely wipe out the rate in the instance because if even if we add something as simple as 30 frames per second, not not that great, uh, it would run through check 30 times every second so and the array is looking at it you know the array is not going to be too huge especially if they're halfway through this would just disappear instantly so we need that timer in so we have those timers let's see i have a low tongue which goes through the length of the array and it just simply gets the x and y and then does it time 64 because the reason it times 64 is because in my case a the textures are 64 by 64. I might change that, but that's what I have. I've, again, hard coded. Probably shouldn't hard code it like this. You should probably make a global variable for the chunk size or something and such. So here we go with. And it, I just set it for red for now. We we'll need natural tongue texture as well. And we draw it. We also just draw the current tongue position, so the end of the tongue. But so this is essentially the 
back on tongue. And now we, I've set as move player, probably not the best. Again, not great function name. Probably need to rename this to move tongue. Make it clear for us so it is more readable. And we move through and we're checking for collision. Now we'll get to collision later, but for now, uh, if the player is holding the key down, so you don't see the key press, so you move one by one. I might need to change this, so again, it's you hold it down because based on the gameplay, you, you can move faster, and I don't want people just to constantly tap it, it'll be quite annoying. In this case, we hold a key R down, and we also check if the tongue is greater than zero, otherwise, it will get an error saying it's trying to remove an element that just doesn't exist because you raised zero. We also need to check if the list since the time since the last tongue it keyed last time it moved one back one is greater than or equal to the rate so simply check the rate we get the delta time you know what delta time is that's the time passed between a frame so if someone's playing at lower frame rate uh they will also retract as about as quickly as, a, as opposed to a higher frame rate now i also put a check here this is just to prevent in a very, 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 very unlikely case of an inter OJ flow, if we could just constantly increment the slash rate, eventually would hit the end of the integer and reset back to a negative, and then they would have to, and then that means this would never get triggered. So I just put this in. It will never, it would be so rare that it would happen, but it can happen, and I feel like I just packed it out for them. So if it hits 10, it just, it just won't add to it. Now for the check tile, I pass in the knew the expected position and of it before we move so before we move we check hey uh, am i gonna hit a wall or am i gonna hit a background we also want to get the old position this is something that we want to revert back to as well we get a new position and we convert it back to a single dimension array because my world generation or level generation is stored in a single dimension array and this is actually really simple, it's the x position plus the level width of the level and I'm calling it from the function, I might make this a, a global variable in main because it's used everywhere we times that by the, the y position and that will give us where it is in, in the single dimension array we just check, is it a background or is it the tongue itself, so the player's tongue is it a wall, sorry uh, So if it isn't, we return false, aka okay, this is the wall, do not move over. If it, it if it does, we go for loop through the tongue length and the position was a new position, uh, we return false. And then we check also check if the tongue length is greater than zero. And then mute new position equals the last position the last tongue. so let's say the player wants to move back one in their own uh, in their back to the direction they came then check for that and if it is then we set this back to zero else fine and we the player moves forward so this just goes for this so we simply just go back over it it's the background or it's a tongue we just check that it's not a tongue length loop back on. It's the their last position, the, the position behind them, the previous position they were. Then we let them move that direction. Else, then everything else is clear. So, and that's it. And we just one last go. You can see we loop through. And so, awesome. Now I think the next stage would be to add the ants into the mix. I went through and added the enemies, which are. Uh, I went through and actually refactored it a couple of times, but let's show you it. They all spawn at once, which is what I've observed from the videos, and they all just go in one direction. It does appear that different enemies or items like the red ant or the worm work differently, but the base white ants all spawn at the same time. So firstly, you see that once they hit the end, they, res they respawn back at the other side, and it's as if, if they lose, so they swap sides, and they go to different, the opposite direction. One more time, and boom, we also all move at the same rate, I think I'll keep it like that, and I think I do that in this, the actual game, so I'll double check. Now, I've also added a bit of basic collision detection, so watch it, oh, 
there's one gone, there's two gone, and yeah, they're all gone. And then after a period of time, they should also just respawn. Now we'll see. Let's just wait. There you go. They've respawned. Uh, this the collision detection work is not really collision detection. It just checks if it's by a grid by grid basis, and it's not ideal because the ants aren't moving by a grid by grid like the tongue is. And so we can see in an example that uh, you see it goes kind of like inside. So we actually need to check per angle to see if the tongue hits. Uh, we also need to, when it hits the side of the tongue, to let the player not actually kill the ant. That's it. I've also just, there's no texture, there's no squares at the moment. But yeah, that's 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 the, the visual representation. So to go over the code. Uh, I did two approaches. The first approach was an array of rectangles and such, and that it would uh, remove, if the ant was killed, it would remove it from the array. Now, I thought, looking back at it, this was kind of a bad idea, risk of errors such as did it try to remove an ant when it didn't exist, so it caused all sorts of errors. In this case, I have created a structure and just preload all the ants in and never delete the arrays, just tell them if it's ever eaten and what their respawn time is, their direction and rectangle. So I've this ant struck I can call. And I have the array of spawned ants. And I also have the available rows spawn. Actually I don't think I use this anymore. I am just gonna double check. Oops. I copy that. Yeah, no, I don't I don't even use this array. This was the old array, so I was checking if it was available. And because I was kinda of randomly spawning them. I don't do that anymore, so. And uh, this is also the spawn timer. I don't think uh, these are unused as well, so I need to remove those. So we have the ant handler, uh, which is the first thing run. It just loads all the ants first. If it's loaded true, then we no longer need to load it. And then we loop through the array. array. And firstly, we check, well, if, if the ant isn't eaten, if it if it isn't eaten, then we get the ant movement equal the ants. In ant movement, we simply move the ant based on delta time. And we do the same sort of, we do a check on collision. Uh, if this is true, the ant has been eaten and we set its respawn time. Then we just return, so we, end the, we exit the function. If it if it isn't, then we remove the ants, and then we do one more check to see if it's out of the range of the map, and then we set it back to the other side. Now for the, tongue, the chunk tongue collisions, really simple. It's the same method as what we did with the wall, we just get a position, check if it is in the map, if it, return, if it is, if it's a tongue, then just return true. We also don't need to check for a wall because they only move left and right, so there's no need for that. Here's my repair rants, which is just loading them. So we go through the amount of rows. We check if it's divisible by two, aka an odd number. We randomize which side it's on. So this is the side it either spawns negative one or fifteen. Again, hard coded. Maybe not the best idea. And we decide that and then we just set it, we set the if it's eaten false, we'll set the respawn time to negative one because it's not dead and we'll set it later. And then we just append it to the array. Now back up to here. Let's say if the ant isn't eaten, check if it isn't and we decrease the time based on delta time. And we keep going. Uh, we first check if the, if it's greater than zero. If it isn't, then the ant has now, it's now ready for the respawn. We set it back to false, we set it back to minus one. We choose a side at which it randomly can spawn. As you can see, pull from the index, and we set the direction. And we change this x angle, x position back to where it should be. And then we update the array as well. You also may have noticed wherever it is, we do a reference, which is the, the and symbol. We point to it, otherwise, if we don't do this, it actually doesn't update position, we'll get it will overwrite it. So, this is a superior way, so we're referencing it. But that is all the code. 
Oh, I think that makes for a good end of the video. It actually doesn't look like much what I've done. All I've really added is a level, a tongue, a bit of art, and the ant spawning. But it takes quite a lot of work, and trying to explain it all as well is quite time consuming. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you're actually learning something, because I want it to be a learning lesson for not just me, but for also you. And learning it, programming from scratch has been really fun so far. Uh, this shouldn't hopefully take too long. Now, I only do it every days in the evenings i do have a job but um yeah but in the next video i sh will probably start adding um more ant the proper collision for the ants and maybe a scoring system maybe update the level as well to improve that while it's fresh in my mind of what solution i want and yeah just remember to subscribe and comment and like the video if you like this and suggest improvements to the video or the code as well if you have any suggestions anyway that's about it. I'll see you.